for joining me in another video today. Today we're going to be talking about how cold weather can affect your electric vehicle. I'm currently in a town quite a bit away from Phoenix in Arizona, which is expected to have a high of 37 degrees Fahrenheit this weekend. And possibly some snow, as you can see. I know that might feel warm to some of you, but for me, it's quite chilly. Electric vehicle batteries like to be at a comfortable temperature, and your car's computer will help to keep it that way. An EV's thermal management system is made to draw energy to warm or cool the vehicle's battery as needed to ensure it operates in that ideal range. An optimal temperature for vehicle efficiency is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21.5 degrees Celsius. When batteries are very cold, it can be harmful to charge them at high rates. EVs can compensate for this by lowering the charge current and raising it once the batteries are at a warmer temperature. For Tesla, when traveling to a supercharger, the car will preheat the batteries so that when you arrive, your car is able to take the full charging rate. This uses a bit of extra energy but saves time when stopping to charge. Tesla Model S and Model X cars have dedicated heaters for the battery pack, whereas the Model 3 and the Model Y only have a cabin heater. This is because the Model 3 and the Y cars put the inverters in an inefficient mode, which allows the motors to output about 6 kilowatts of heat for the battery. Limiting charge current can affect you in other ways as well. Regenerative braking can be reduced as it can typically charge the battery above 50 kilowatts. When your car's battery is very cold, it may not be able to use regen at all. You'll have to go back to the old ways of using your brakes. In extreme cold temperatures, you may even see the power output of the car be reduced and even have some of the battery capacity locked off. Regenerative braking power output and battery restrictions are all lifted once the battery pack gets warmer again. For truly cold-soaked batteries, they may not even charge when first plugged in. I've never seen it firsthand, but cars whose batteries are totally frozen will drop power only to start warming up the battery. Once they reach a safe temperature, they'll start to charge the car. It is not recommended exposing your car to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures for periods longer than 24 hours. If you live in areas where it frequently gets this cold, it would be a good idea to keep your car in the garage. Preconditioning is a popular word in the EV community, especially in the wintertime. Preconditioning not only warms the cabin of the car, but it also can prep the battery if it's very cold. Another reason it's recommended to precondition the car while plugged in is because the car will prioritize using short power rather than using its stored energy. This way you don't use up your battery while the car is getting warm. This gets me onto a topic where EVs are at a bit of a disadvantage in the wintertime. Internal combustion vehicles have a slight advantage that their engines get so hot by burning gasoline, diesel, or other fuels that they don't need to expend any additional energy to warm the cabin. They create heat as a byproduct, but are able to use it in the winter to heat up the cabin. So long as the engine is warm, they only need to run a fan to warm the car. In an EV, the motors really don't create too much heat on their own, so the cars need to create their own. Most EVs use a resistive heater, which functions the same way as a basic space heater. These heaters are 100% efficient, but they can still draw a good amount of power and can reduce the range of your car. Some newer EVs use heat pumps. These can be up to 300% efficient. This is a huge jump and will greatly assist to keep EV drivers going long distances in the wintertime. Things like heated seats and steering wheels can also help to reduce heater usage. Using a heated seat has almost no impact on range because it uses so little energy. An advantage of using a resistive heater or a heat pump is that you'll get instant heat. There's no need to wait for the car to get hot before you start feeling warm. You just set the temperature and a few seconds later you'll be much more comfortable. EVs have also been known to handle very well in snowy or icy conditions. EVs use electric motors so they're able to react at moment's notice when on slippery pavement. Cars with two motors have an added advantage because each motor can react to ice independently. This is no replacement for a good set of snow tires, of course. Having good tires is more important than any fancy traction control or ABA system out there. A big question that comes up is, how do the batteries hold up long-term in cold weather? 
The good news is that in colder climates, the batteries actually have a better long-term longevity than in warmer climates. This isn't including extreme cases that go well below zero, of course. Battery stress is minimized in the cold, and while they do charge slower, the batteries don't age as quickly. Even sitting at 100% charge in the cold, the batteries are under a pretty low level of stress. You should still stick to charging under 90% or less for daily use. Electric vehicles have a list of pros and cons in cold conditions, but also remember that internal combustion cars also have a list of cons and degraded efficiency in the cold weather as well. I'll link some additional resources below if you'd like to read more on electric vehicles and cold temperatures. Electric vehicles are great, especially for that instant heat. I hate sitting in a freezing car. Luckily, I can get cozy. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai is my dog. And make sure to check out my website at www.kaizev.com. That's all for now and happy charging. EV batteries want to be cozy. <laughs>